Hello and welcome back to the channel and this is gonna be the last episode of our React uh, WebSocket, Socket.io and Maps series and in this series we're gonna uh, work on um, map updates meaning we'll write some uh, functionality on our server that will periodically update the position of our um, vehicles because well as you may imagine in services like uh, uber um, the position of vehicles isn't static so uh, we're gonna actually start working on our server first so um, we're gonna write some helper function and a module to help us um, set it up properly i'm gonna start by writing a function set up interval data updates and we're gonna pass a socket here okay uh, and that will allow me to create uh, a new file and i'm gonna call it just updates so i'll say dot ps okay uh, and here we're gonna need a few things uh, one thing is of course the setup um how did i call it setup interval data updates serval setup interval data updates it's gonna take a socket um, and what we're gonna do first thing first we need to remember our about our housekeeping so on disconnect event you know perform some stuff uh, and uh what i'm going to do is um maybe use a timeout yeah i'm gonna use a timeout here because uh, i would like the updates uh, to be fired off um, randomly in a random period of times let's say between 10 to 8 seconds so every 2 or 8 seconds i would like to receive an update uh, so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna stash our timeout id uh, in here and on disconnect uh, i'm just gonna check whether timeout id exists and if it does it, it properly does i'm gonna clear the timeout so that's one thing that we have to do and uh, the other i'm gonna create another helper function called set timeout and emit data and i'm gonna pass a socket there too so uh, set timeout and emit data is taking a socket as an input. Uh, if we have ongoing timeout, let's clear it. It's one thing. Okay, then we can actually create our timeout. So set timeout. And in our timeout, well, first things first, we're gonna trigger it off periodically. Mm, do we have, oh, I'm gonna bump the uh, font size so you can see it more clearly. Now it's big enough, I think. Um, if I go to data here, I have a random number. So let's export that too. And then actually let me clear that, clear that. Oh, this is TS. Uh, it can be JS because we don't have TypeScript on the backend. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna need a random number here. Let's say from two to eight 
Okay. So whatever we put in, in that function is going to be triggered um, after two or from two to eight seconds, right? Uh, so we need to decide um we need to decide on the amount of the updates we'd like to perform so update number that's gonna be let's do math floor from one to 200 should be good because random number um isn't uh, giving us back the integer, right? It's uh, rather giving us back, uh, yeah, it's giving us back a floating number. So we have to uh, round that. Uh, then uh, we have to figure out the indexes uh, of, of the updates we'd like to perform. So it's going to be empty number, uh, empty array. And then we're going to perform simple for loop. Uh, I'm not great fan of this, but it is what it is. Uh, so let's use I less than updates number and increment. And then we're going to push into our empty array a random number uh, from the set of zero to data oh, we have to export that to um, data length Okay, so basically what that does uh, is a little bit of randomization of our data. First, we randomize the number of the updates we'd like to perform. So like how many ve vehicles uh, change their positions. Then uh, we um, were um, trying to figure out uh, which indexes should be updated in our um, in our um, data, right? Because we have our data stored here uh, in uh, an object, uh, but uh, you can also figure out the indexes uh, with the of the keys in your object. So, for example, if my object right equals something like this which is basically the structure of our object right because we have uh, keys um, in our object because this is basically the lookup table then I can say that, well, this is something like index number one, uh, zero, one, two, right? And then I can uh, update the data on these indexes, even though it's uh, object, not an array, okay? So this is me trying to pick uh, indexes for the updates and then i'm just gonna uh, add another function here update data on indexes and pass them there um so let's write that and i'm actually gonna write that here where our data lives so update data on indexes is gonna take indexes to update okay uh, and then well we have to write it so first i'm going to take all 
vehicle IDs from the data and that's just calling object keys get data okay uh, now I can figure out uh, let's say the IDs of the vehicles that I should update so I'm gonna say IDs of vehicles to update and that's gonna be indexes to update map true simple lookup table okay so here i have my, my index to update so this is for example something like say 0 1 5 20 34 i should update data um, in a lookup data in a lookup table on that indexes so i'm here taking the keys right like I mentioned before, um, this is something like uh, a something like, let's say, all vehicle IDs is something like a equal to something and b is equal to something and so forth and so on. So now I'm mapping. Uh, meaning I, I am creating a loop here and transferring one array into another one and uh, I am uh, sorry this is a keys array right so this is a b d d e f g basically every single um, every single um, key in our data and now I can just uh, since this is an array now I can pick the IDs I would like to update so for example uh, all vehicle ID and from index 1 is gonna be of course key number one. Oh, sorry this is going to be uh b right so that has a value of b and now here i'm going to store all let's say for example b d e so these are the keys on which i'm going to update uh, my uh, my data okay so what i'm gonna update uh, is um actually the um i'm gonna update the uh, longitude and latitude so let's maybe leave it as it is and to do that uh, i'm gonna use a reduce function right uh, should I or I could use no I have to use a reduce function uh, and this is because I'm turning an array into an object okay I'm still gonna um, return lookup table from that okay so let's return ideas of vehicles to update re use we're gonna have accumulator and next object here uh, and i have to remember that i have to initialize the accumulator right and then i'm going to say accumulator under the next key store everything that was under the data under the ski but change the longitude and change the latitude so basically uh, the id and the name was it and the name is gonna be the same because here i am copying it 
and here I'm gonna just do uh, basically the same as I did here okay so uh, and let's export this of course so here I am getting the indexes for this data that should get updated then I am uh, tra transforming those indexes meaning 0, 1, 2 and so on and so forth uh, into the keys I have in data which are UUID keys right because we're creating it here and then for those keys I am um, creating a new object representing the position updates where I'm copying what was in it, mainly the ID and the um, name, but I am updating the position of given vehicle. So this, this new data is gonna have the same format as that data, but it's gonna be significantly smaller because this has uh, 10,000 entries, while our update uh, is limited to uh, this range right so that gives me back the updated data and what is left for us to do is to uh, emit new uh, events so let's call it position updates okay and updated data uh, and we're gonna also set timeout again so this function is gonna call itself again right um again and again again but each time is gonna get uh, some different timeout so it's more randomized uh, we can actually add a lock here and see how that works so let's try that and it failed um setup interval data updates oh we have to export it of course um grab that export it get rid of that okay let's try this again okay and it failed again that's not a problem uh, because uh, because i didn't import it of course uh, so i'm gonna just import it require um updates and here we have that now it should be good i hope server is running it's not crashing anymore okay uh, <laughs> again updates update data on indexes is not defined but we're just missing a couple of imports uh, here and there that's all fine and you can see it crashing because we don't have a typescript uh, if we had that we would have static code analysis which would help okay we have undefined here uh, which is a little bit concerning um let's see we do this we do the return so what i am missing is it cleared after being emitted? No, it's still undefined. Uh, let's add some logs here and there.
Okay, so we have one key here. Uh, why is it always just one? Now let's see. Index is to update. This one. And again, there's just one. So that's one interesting thing. Um, oh, of course. Um, I'm missing a random number here. Okay. Try this again. Okay. Looking way better. Let's see. Can set property of undefined. Uh, why would be that undefined? We have this. Oh, of course, you have to return the accumulator from the uh, reduce loop. Okay, so now it looks like it's working. And you can see it being called periodically, so it's all fine. Um, that basically covers up the server portion. Uh, what we need to do, of course, is to uh, go to our uh, go to our client right now, and this is going to be in uh, app TSX. Um, here we are listening on the initial data. Uh, we're gonna also add another listener here for position updates. Uh, and that's gonna be, um, let's say, updates, which is a vehicle response to, because as I mentioned, format is the same. And we have to also update the vehicles in our state right now, but we actually have to be smart about it. Uh, so um, instead of simply calling set vehicles, uh, we have to actually uh, pass a function here. So uh, if you're using state in React, you can pass a function instead of object to take into uh, account the previous value of the state into the calculation of the new state. So we have a previous vehicle state here and we should uh, return a new, um, or let's call it vehicles in state. And what you should uh, do is return an object from that function. And the object it re is representing the new state, right? Or object or basically anything you had here. So good example would be a counter where pressing a button should increment the counter by one. So you have to know what was previously in your state as we have to know here. So uh, if there wasn't anything in the state, let's return empty object, that's one problem. And then uh, we have to iterate over the keys in uh, our updates. And 
for each uh, this vehicle ID, we have to check the vehicles in state uh, under that ID and supply a new value there. So that's going to be our simple update and then have to return um, basically we're updating the same value the same object we already have in a state so if i were to return vehicles in state like this that's not gonna trigger um, react to render because we're we're uh, returning the same um object which lives in the same place in the javascript memory uh, what we have to do is create a copy right so that react recognizes this as a new um, state and triggers all necessary re renders let's see whether that works <laughs> And as you can see, the numbers are changing, meaning uh, our updates are being taken into an account. Uh, so can we... Let's go to components and into our app. Oh no, it's, it's not gonna show because we have too much in memory. Okay, but as you can see here, it does change, right? Maybe if you can screen, uh, zoom in a little. Yeah. So this, uh, this is how you can update data dynamically. And what is cool about that, and is something really to remember, is in that application, we're not asking the server about the data about the updates, uh, we are rather uh, fed the data from the WebSocket. So um, basically, if you're building any app that will require frequent data updates, you could look into Socket.io or uh, WebSockets to handle that. Uh, because, uh, well, it's way better to be informed or notified about the data being changed, they're constantly um, constantly asking about the data. And you can search for stuff like long polling versus WebSocket techniques uh, that should uh, pretty well explain the difference to you. The long polling is like you, you set up some kind of interval or timeout in the client and periodically ask about ask the server about well is my data change yet is my data change yet is my data change yet well uh, if i would be the one to answer to that question i would find it rather annoying it is way better to uh, be informed about the change just once and then just update this uh, update uh, your code and your UI just once. Okay, so uh, that's it for that series. Um, recently, I created first uh, post uh, on YouTube asking what should we do next, and uh, the vote was on the deep dive into functional JavaScript. Uh, so. I will probably start working on that series and I hope you like it. Thank you very much. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll be back bring you more information about web development and maybe mobile development in the future. So thank you and goodbye.